are. Sunny race day, we can actually see a few feet in front of us, so that's always a good sign after last year. It's been an awesome road up to this point. You know, we started off out here with a bit of a celebration at Tesla. We had the car in the showroom and some interviews and Randy was signing some autographs and the energy was fantastic. All the Tesla fans came out. Uh, really, really good times. Uh, thank you, Tesla Colorado Springs. Yeah, thank you. After that, the driving became a big factor and we did a lot of testing. We were at a PPIR. Randy, what were your comments on the testing early on? Nobody knows what the drivers know about that top section. It's the Baja 500 and I wanted bumps. Well, we found one in the parking lot at PPIR. One bump, went over it. We have adjustable shocks, Olin's TTX from Unplugged Performance. Bump, tweak. I probably didn't put one mile on your car, <laughs> but we got an adjustment to where it felt so much better. And then we took it to the track. Absolutely. And yeah, you know, every step of the way, the car has been improving. I've seen your confidence rise with every day. Last year, we had a largely similar car. It just wasn't as composed over the bumps. Day one, in practice, we're in the middle section. They call it the W's. That's where the flat is the best. The Yokohama tires are so good, and the torque goes right to the ground, and we were quickest in the middle section. Absolutely. And the key thing is we were very fast even at the top. And that's the way to do it, is ramping up little by little. It was. And by the end, I think we're all very confident that you can go fast, and the car will maintain the whole way through. Yeah, it was terrific, Ben. And then day three, qualifying, it rained. Well, they moved the whole day to the next day, Friday, and we did really well in qualifying. The plaid is handling really well, both on the bumps and on the smooth section. That's why I'm in a good mood. You can usually tell my mood by how well the car's driving. Absolutely, we're really happy with qualifying day. It's the fastest this car has ever run. And even with that, we had a bit of an anomaly where we didn't really have full power for almost a minute. So we were hoping to break four minutes. Looking back at the video, we could have easily done it. But the key thing is the car is dialed in. There's always variables you can't really control on race day, but this is the best the car has ever been. We're all really confident about today. The weather's cooperating. I'm just excited. So after Fast 15 qualified, we finished 10th. What did we do after that? We went to Casa Bonita. That was incredible. Uh, Trey Parker. It's been a big supporter. We got to have a private tour inside Casa Bonita. They haven't opened yet. The chef Dana made sopa pias for us. We put them on the wing. We're eating sopa pias at Casa Bonita. It was a fantastic experience. And we went down to Fan Fest. I signed autographs. I met so many wonderful people. It's a great show downtown. It's all really just fun to see the energy and excitement around us. And uh, really, you only get that feeling, at least for me, out here at Pikes Peak. So it's really a special event. All that's left now is the run to the top. I'm in a great mood. Ben, you've been so good in developing this car. Thank it you. gets Thank better you. every year. And cross your fingers, everybody. Come ride with me to 14,110 feet. Woo! Yeah. I leave the line real gently because I'm trying to manage battery temp. And then as we line up with the start line, Boom! Give it everything it's got. Little bit of lift because it's the first corner and I don't want a mistake in the first corner. Big speed, almost 120. Leading into a right hand kink. Back up to 110 plus. Downhill, apex that corner late. The hill catches me and I squeeze it again up the hill. This is a gentle 90 left. High speed corner. Leaving in, into another one right. Guardrail on the outside. Setting up one of my favorite sections, the S's. Set up right, left, right, left. Annoying little bump here that the shocks are soaking up beautifully. Look, we go over that and nothing moves. Hard left, accelerate, use everything we got around a sweeper right. Boom, into the brakes while cornering. The car does not move, it's so stable. And again, around the corner, up the hill, tricky blind corner, one of the few level corners, past the 30 mile an hour speed limit sign. Long sweeper right, late apex it, and on it. We're heading for a high speed section. This is a left turn, set it up left. Late apex, roll the power on, we're heading for engineer's corner. Go, go, speed builds, 120, 125, 130, almost. Into the brakes, first hard stop, all the way down to low speed for that uphill right, hard back to the right. 
really putting it down. You got to take everything the Yokohamas have coming on this long picnic straight. Now the arrow works. One of the fastest corners on the track, 105 miles an hour, down the long straight. I looked a little early, try to cool that battery pack, then hard on the brakes, back into the left. We have a, a right, left, right, almost straight away. Off camber here. Got to be half finesse. Tippy toe through there, a little squirt. Again, off camber, it leans the wrong way. Half finesse, getting down slow in the hairpins. It's not aero at this speed. It's all wheel drive electric torque. We blast out of that corner. In the first of two lefts that look a lot alike. Track out, back left to the right, and hard on the throttle. Into what I call curb corner. It's a late apex, heading to blue sky. Check it out. First time we don't see anything but blue sky on the outsides. Accelerate, turn this into one long sweeper with a very late apex. Now we're going right, left, right as we head into Heitman's Hill. Another hairpin. These switchbacks are where Dark Helmet excels. Look at that acceleration coming out of there. Another sweeper left. It's a little later apex. Hold and go. Long uphill climb, high speed, kink to the right. Long, I know every tree. That one up there is our break point. Past that, boom, into the brakes. Gilly's corner and 90 degree uphill left. Little power oversteer. That's the track mode working. Back to the right ski area. Here's the crowd lining the track. We're in the power, heading for Rookie's Corner. Battery's getting warm. Power's dropping down right in this area. Through Rookie's, I'm trying to carry speed through the corners, keep the speed up, and we're heading for the sump. Tricky corner. Cross the inside. Carrying speed here, really the best I've ever done this corner. Back to the right in the late the apex. Even radius, nice 180 back to the left. Now we're heading straight away towards the switchback below Glen Cove. Looks a lot like the road to the south. But there's that guardrail. I use that for a braking target. Hard on the brakes. The brakes are holding up well. The plaid stops. It doesn't care about that weight. Again, sweeper left. It tightens up, tightens up, tightens up. Now we're going to a section we never get to practice. These S's are on the way to Glen Cove, fast, building speed. I'm trying to carry 100 miles an hour onto the front straight and down that straightaway. Again, I left a little early, trying to save the battery heat through the dirty corner, I call it. And now we're heading for Georgia's. Up, up, up we go. We're about the tree line into a nice 180 left. Good balance. And boy, does this car come off a corner it is easy to drive at the limit. Another long pull under power. Another lift at the end of the straights. Long term goal, spread out that heat and get the power as evenly distributed as we can all the way up. Speaking of up, 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 long right. It just keeps going around the mountain, going around the mountain. I look for that gate on the left. I'm looking for a speed limit sign on the right. Hard in the brakes. They're still there. This is Elk Park, super tight, hairpin back to the right. Flat out around the mountain, you can't see it, but I know it's there. The road continues through a nice 90 degree left and up to Ragged Edge. The power has derated at this point. It's not as flat as it was, but you know what? It's still going pretty good. Look at those speedometer numbers. Through a kink, off camber, the arrow works there, it's fast. All the way down the low speed corner, we always get a little power oversteer there and we're driving up to double cut. This is the second half of double cut. Wide corner, not much banking. The all wheel drive kills it, puts the power down so well off that corner. And now we're into the W's. This is the best place for the unplugged performance plan. Back to the right, scary on the outside, isn't it? You gotta flirt with that and accelerate hard all the way up the hill to W number two. This is a late break, long guardrail that can throw you off later. I'll tell you about back to the right. Yeah, this is flat out. I know you don't see anything but the blue sky, but it's flat out. Trust me. Can you see that guardrail and feel relieved? Jam on the brakes. They're still holding. This is hard on those carbon ceramic brakes. Back to the right, flat out. And this guardrail fools you. It's shorter. 
you got to break sooner. W number four. This one you got to know. You accelerate a while, now start slowing down, kids. This one turns left and there's no clue. Through the left, flat out to the right. We're so good in these flat out sweepers. The all wheel drive puts it down thanks to Yokohama biomass tires. Another of the many switchbacks, the reason why the plat is so good here, short run, back to the right, we're out of 16 mile, we're coming up to Devil's Playground, look at that crowd along the outside, fast sweeper running about 70 to 80 miles an hour, the course has changed, we're above the tree line, it's getting tricky up here, fast sweepers like this one, blind, Nothing but blue sky on the outside. I'm looking at the mountain in the distance for clues. Flat out through the kink. This is my least favorite corner. It's called bottomless pit. We got trouble there before, but the unplugged shocks soak it up now. It's an amazing setup, better than ever. Up the hill. Look at this blind corner up over the hill. I got my best speed over through ever through here. Over 80, back into the power again. It's a hill climb, folks, steeply uphill through another flat kink into another very similar corner. Look at that. This one, you got to turn a little longer, wait for it, and then go. We're heading for Boulder Park. We got a fast sweep where I was keeping my foot in it, baby. Keep that foot down. <laughs> be brave, be brave. My favorite corner, fast, banked sweeper, 100 miles an hour plus. The arrow works so, everything works so well there in the plan. Into a not so tight hairpin back to the right, flat out around the left. We're now coming into Boulder Park. This is one of the roughest sections of the track. We're into the super tough bumps that we've been talking about, that we've been testing for. Look at the car ride over this stuff. Not bad. It used to jump around like a bucking Bronco trying to throw a rider. Flat out soaking these bumps. The Olin shocks, the TTX, they're soaking it up and I'm so pleased with the progress we've made. Through another fast kink, gotta carry speed because look at that straight. It's rough, but the shocks and suspension are soaking it up. This is a tricky corner. Speed is a little quicker at the beginning and right at the very end it kinks back. Bumpiest part of the track, it's getting worse by about what, mile by mile. But in our testing, see those bumps? We soak them up, but we're not hurting the suspension and the aerodynamics. Cog cut, another hairpin, the second to the last one. We're almost home now. No time to lift though. The clock is ticking. Stay in the right lane. It's smoother. Got some fast corners and they're bumpy. <clears throat> Gotta keep this car on the ground. Here comes the last hairpin on it. This one's bigger a little faster. The uh, lifting seemed to cool the battery. We've got a lot of power on the run to the checkered flag. It's rough. Go to the right lane. It's smoother. Squirt that torque. Finish line. We're home. We're home. Best run ever. Best handling ever for the unplugged performance plaid that we call Dark Helmet. Ooh. Made the 10 minute goal. Car handled great. There's a lot more potential left. The Yokohama tires in biomass, fantastic. The unplugged performance parts all around make this Tesla so quick up the hill, it defies physics. There's no reason why this car can be so fast, being as big as it is and being a family luxury sedan. But it gets the job done and you know what? There's a lot more and I want it. The shocks do such a good job of soaking up the bumps and keeping control. Control. For a big family sedan, man. <laughs> well, this car came with factory air suspension, and you drove that previously, uh, and we swapped it all out for a custom-built coilover. So we're using these old TTX four-ways, custom-built to our specs. We've been dialing them in, and one of the best things I heard you say was that it was as comfortable and as controlled as air suspension, which it's fantastic because we really are doing a lot with these coilovers. We have our adjustable front upper control arms on the car. We also have on the rear, rear camber arms and tow arms that are adjustable. Plus all the rear arms actually are made out of billet with higher rated bearings instead of all the rubber mushiness that's in the car originally. Oh, yeah. And all of that just is designed to make the car feel more controlled. 
you know, less sloppy. It's been a big step forward in the braking department, and I was really happy with the amount of data we had on brake temperatures, yeah. because the car stops so well, it, it belies its weight. It's, it's amazing. The, the Yokohama tires help, but those big carbon ceramics are getting the job done. Yeah, so one of the things with this car is that the brakes will get hot no matter what brakes you have. So what's really important is ducting. We have carbon brake ducts in the front of the car, carbon tubes that run to the back here, and uh, ultimately, you know, proof's in the pudding. These brakes were not getting that hot despite the whole run. The risk is so high on this mountain road. We got a combination of 1,000 horsepower and almost 5,000 pounds, and that means brake heat, because it goes fast and you got to stop it fast, and ducting cool air to the brakes is an absolutely necessary part of performance driving in a Tesla, especially a plant. So one of the cool things about the lights you were looking at, I know it gave you confidence to see the brake temperatures. We were using the race pack. And the race pack, what it's doing is gathering a ton of data. In this case, gathering brake temperature data to make sure you were in a safety zone where you didn't have to worry about it. It was very comforting to be able to check our data readout and just go by the number of lights and know that the brake temperatures are okay. I think we'd be out of luck with a Tesla Plaid if it didn't have track mode. And we've got the latest, greatest version. It just came over the air yep. and into the car. And it makes the car feel natural in the ultimate high performance driving situations at the limit. Much better than it was. Yep. One of the things it does is allows me to apply power a lot sooner coming out of especially a tight corner. And that's the best thing this car does is put power down out of a tight corner. Pikes Peak is known as a switchback. So this wheel is based on our UPO3 design, which is one of our fan favorite wheels because it's one of the lightest, strongest wheels based on shape and also technology of how we've manufactured it. This wheel is extremely light. Uh, we've done you know, hundreds of customer cars. No one ever calls us saying they bent a wheel. It takes a lot to bend a wheel. Pretty much a big crash at Pikes Peak is the only case that'll bend this wheel. We learned that unfortunately in one case and that's the only wheel in the history we've ever bent. This wheel holds up to everything. Plus wheels rotate. It's rotating mass. So a lighter wheel really pays off, pays off in acceleration time. and braking. Well, people always used to say Teslas were only fast in a straight line. Then we started making them handle well and they said they're only fast for a minute. Then we made them handle well and go a little bit faster. And then they said, okay, you can only do four minutes. Now you are breaking the 10 minute mark. You ran hard the whole way up. The brakes sound like they did really well. The brakes were great. The car handled well. And that's quite an accomplishment. All the cars you came down with, there was no car looking quite like you. <laughs> you know, the cars in front of you and behind you were all purpose built million dollar cars. Yes. And you're driving a stock powered Model S, breaking the 10 minute mark. Well, Unplugged Performance got an awful lot out of a Tesla <laughs> play. You know, takes it from beyond the power to the handling, driving, braking capabilities. Amazing. In the hands of a master. Thank you, thank you. No, I drove. <laughs> it's been a fantastic day. We're so excited with the performance of the Plaid from Unplugged Performance. Sub 10, top 10. Woo!